Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about China's new game policy for minors. First, I'm going to talk about the problem that they have emerged since the new policy was promulgated. Then I'm going to analyze the negative and the positive effect of this policy. Finally, I will give my opinion and suggestion. In order to prevent minors from indulging in online games, China has set a time limit for play games. The regulation apply to all games in China, including collate game, web game, and mobile games. But at the same time, problems are gradually emerging. Many businesses have opened the business of renting game accounts. Miners can set game accounts for a certain period of time through application or shopping website by paying the merchant a certain amount. These businesses have been able to solve the problem of spot checking, uh, facial recognition in games, making it a uh, uh, lucrative industry. According to the service, this business can make a profit range uh, from $2,000 to $6,000 per month by renting account. China's EDJ won the League of Legends World Championship a few days ago. One of the players, Flando, is 23 years old. When he was 14 years old, his game level reached the higher levels in China. And then he started his eSports career. A professional gamer's uh, eSports career is usually between the age of 16 uh, and 24. Because hand speed and reflex at their best at this age, but since China introduced a policy to limited underage playing game. Many professional players have been deterred from competing. Will club have changed their selection criteria to 18 or older? Many people have questioned whether the government is right to restrict underage gaming. We can analyze it from two sides. The first one is the bad side. Minors are not mature enough to be uh, constant by policies uh, issued by the government. With the development of science and technology, children have been exposed to these high technology products since their childhood, and uh, many children have learned to use VPN to transfer their IP to foreign country. To escape the, the government's control, this also has a certain impact on the development of domestic games in China, because for region games, manufacturers are not affected by China's policy. They will learn to some players to switch to switch to for region games. This is a problem that governments need to confront and solve. Another problem is that the development of esports in China has also been greatly affected. Esports also announced some time ago, Hangzhou, China will become an official of the Asian game sport. This means that China will start development of eSports. But the new policy for eSports is undoubtedly a very big abroad. A lot of eSports club minor player is unable to play, and the biggest impact is difficult to recruit them to write a uh, candidate. Even if this esports uh, esports club changed their uh, selection criteria to uh, eighteen plus, it would be difficult to solve the problem because an esports professional player usually must go through two uh, or three years of professional training before the, he can play. But now the training starts from the age of eighteen. However, these negative effects are limited for esports club, domestic game development, and some players. It has, uh, it has brought some bad effects. For many parents in China, it has brought positive effects. Because many parents are busy with work, they do not have much time to control their children, and their children's self-control ability is relatively poor. The government's policy 
can effectively help children to control their playing time reason reasonable. The reason why they choose Friday and uh, weeknights is not to affect uh, children's study on weekdays. Uh, for example, a round of the honor of kings usually takes 20 to 30 minutes. But if children use this time to study, they can read an article or listen to a piece of listening which will greatly improve their learning efficiency. This can encourage children to participate in more outdoor sports and uh, improve children's physical fitness. Uh, according to 2018 uh, efficient service in China, 72% of children aged 12 to 14 uh, suffer from myopia which is caused by too much screen time. Limiting play time can also keep kids away from screen and uh, protect their eyes. The third benefit is reduce economic loss. Many underage gamers are prone to impulse spending, which bring unnecessary financial loss to their family. In 2019, CCTV Financial News reported a story that a little girl in Nanjing uh, paid uh, $20,000 to the game without her parents' knowledge, and the money was supposed to be used to uh, treat the either uh, either really at uh, home. This is very sad news. Therefore, the government limits the amount of money minors can spend on games, which can help children establish a correct concept of consumption from an early age. In my opinion, the negative impact of this policy can be limited by classifying Games. We can learn from classification system of Australia, which require real name of minors and uh, classifies game according to their age. Uh, games can be classified into level about 10, uh, 15, and uh, 18. Children under 18 should, shouldn't be allowed to play games that contain violence or nudity. Uh, moreover, government can set up an organization is dedicated to selection of esports players. Children want to be esports players can take part in the test after the adoption of children can without being limited by game time. During the training period, uh, such balls neither can break the old rule. Uh, Esport club can also help recruit the right candidate. candidate. Uh, now the government uh, has also begun to crack down an ego business with who rents the game account to minors. This policy still has some imperfection, but the benefits is bring far or outweigh the negative effects. I believe that in the future, this policy will also be more perfect. Thank you for your listening.